Greetings, dear ones. I am Cryon of Magnetic Service. A joy it is to communicate with you in this fashion for those of you who listen to this and believe it, to believe that perhaps there is a voice, that the veil is getting thinner and this voice reaches you at a way it never did before. Some of you are realizing that the human being is like an antenna, that there is more that the human being picks up in its consciousness than just what you've been told. This is how you receive intuition. And we have discussed that before on this very program. We've spoken of beauty of what intuition is and how it comes from your consciousness, not your brain. And there are those who say, wait a minute, <laughs> consciousness comes from your brain. No, it does not. There is a meld between consciousness and your brain. Your brain reacts to the things that you imagine and, and the things you think. And, and the consciousness puts upon the brain something that helps it to work. But if you ask so many who have been to the other side and back, perhaps in what you call near-death experiences, they will tell you, that the brain ceased to function and the consciousness did not. It seemed to take over. When the brain was clinically dead, the consciousness gave wonderful information. Some were very close to the other side where the consciousness was almost ready to explode into the soul energy and they came back. This consciousness of yours, I will call soul consciousness and it aligns itself to your body. The reason I am discussing this at this time this is simply a reminder. And we haven't talked about your DNA, not your entire package of DNA for some time. Let's review what humanity now understands in a nutshell, not scientifically, not medically, but just in summary and in a general way. What does this culture today called Earth know about your DNA? When the human genome first started to be discovered, there was a realization that it was like looking at galaxies within galaxies, that there was so much there, that there were those who would say it's going to take a lifetime to even reveal how much is there. Well, it didn't. They came up with clever methods of seeing DNA and starting to identify what is there. There were a lot of repetitions there that would then lead them to see what the repetitions produced. And that gave them this wonderful picture of what DNA was. What was astonishing is that this DNA of yours, they discovered there were over 3 billion chemicals, 3 billion parts attached to it in an orderly fashion doing things they didn't know, but at least they had the blueprint, you might say, or at least they knew the chemistry. They saw and revealed the double helix, what it looked like, and then the permutations on it and all that it could do. They saw what it might do, but they didn't know what it did. Now this was exemplified by the results given shortly after the Human Genome Project when they said we have revealed the chemistry of DNA over three billion parts, but we only know what approximately 3% of it actually does. They said the coding of 3% was pretty obvious. This was the gene producing portion of your DNA. So immediately you see what your DNA is there for. It is there as a dashboard, you might say, as a, as a control, perhaps as instructions, but it, it makes so much of who you are and continues to. One of the things that they discovered right away was that your DNA was responsible for approximately or over 26,000 genes that you have in your body. Those genes continually being made or perhaps produced at the right time for the right things. Your DNA doesn't just sit there as something you had from birth. 
It is always active, it's always working, and it does things. 3% of it got identified. Now, what about the rest? The overwhelming majority of all the parts, and they said they had no idea. They could not figure out any codes. And therefore, it's so interesting. If you're a smart scientist and you can't figure out something, what do you normally say? Well, someday we will. Well, perhaps, perhaps we just haven't arrived at, at, at that code breaking yet. But instead, almost universally, they threw up their hands and they said, it's junk. <laughs> It must have been left over from past evolutionary processes. That is interesting to me. So if you can't figure it out, therefore, it's junk. I have a little exercise for you. It's one of your imagination. It's something fun. You're in the 1800s, and a, tri a time traveler appears... And he says, hello. And it's obviously that he's, he's traveling through time and he, he made a mistake <laughs> because he opens his book and some pages fall out and bam, he vanishes to the time he wanted to go to. And on the floor, after he's gone, you see the pages he's left and you look at it and go, this is stupid, it's ridiculous. What he's left is a QR code. Now, some of you know what a QR code is. That's the code that you, might, you might, might point at with your smartphone and you get a menu at a restaurant. Not all that profound, perhaps. <laughs> but if you were in the 1800s and, and, and you happened to be in a laboratory and this had happened and you'd seen it with your own eyes, you'd say, an angel appeared or somebody from the future appeared and has left us a message. Have you looked at a QR code? Where do you begin? without any idea of the five or six or seven inventions that have to then build on one another to finally create a code, understand the code, and then translate the code, include the, including that which has to translate, which is, of course, the smartphone, and all that it does with the artificial intelligence that it has. How are you going to look at it? What code breaker in the 1800s do you think could figure out a QR code? A, a, a QR code? What, who do you think could do that? And the answer is probably no one in the world. Because they didn't have access yet to things that had not been discovered or invented or figured out. I like to pretend that they could figure it out. This is me being funny. They figure it out and they say, oh my goodness, those from the future gave us a menu to Sam's restaurant. <laughs> what is the meaning of this? <laughs> Do you see my point? Junk DNA, you couldn't figure it out, so it became junk. Well, luckily, in 2012, they figured it out. Perhaps you didn't know that. There is no such thing anymore of junk DNA. They found out what over 90% of DNA did. Dear ones, it didn't make anything. It was an instruction manual for the rest. Everything they saw there had pieces and parts of language in it. The kinds of code breakers that were most, I would say, ready to help figure this out, and did, were linguists. They showed that it had to be a language. So it became something like libraries filled with books, so the, the instructions, what is in your DNA, and here are the instructions. And here is where I want to tell you something that you probably are aware of now. In that place is revealed... If you could read those instructions, which they cannot, they simply now understand what it might be. When they start reading the instructions, when they start breaking that code, I wonder if they'll release it. It'll talk about your Akash, what you've experienced in other lifetimes. It'll have the feelings in the codes 
that you now are working with. But the big one, it'll talk about the multidimensional 24th pair of chromosomes that you have from the stars. Very well seen and identified if they could look at the codes and they knew what they meant. That will come someday. This, dear ones, will be the proof of all the eye-rolling things that I've been telling you for so long that there's so much more to the human being than biology. There's a lineage that belongs to the stars that's beautiful. And this lineage is starting to open. This 24th pair of chromosomes is starting as a time capsule to be opened. Not that you're going to remember you were from the stars. You're going to start remembering what they gave you. A deeper wisdom. Knowledge of things that are to come. An understanding, perhaps, of why you're here. A feeling of peace when you don't have one now. This is the beginning, just the beginning. My prediction, someday, they will be able to read that code. Right now, it's just like a QR code to them. But when they can, revelation will be here. And they're going to have to think very, very, very hard before they reveal it. But I think you're going to be ready for it. This is just another channel to show your magnificence of who you are, what you are, and what might be coming. Congratulations on making it to this point of light. And so it is.